Zambia was among dozens of African countries that traveled to Beijing to be part of a forum, FOCAC, a platform that is designed to evaluate the relationship between China and African countries, to find ideas that will help improve the relationship, but also develop the African continent with support from China. Zambia held bilateral talks with China, but with several other African countries. On this edition of this day, I am joined by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Foreign and International Affairs, and he runs us through some of the benefits that are expected to come through for Zambia after this forum. Welcome to this day. My name is Dingendava Jonah Buyai. Minister, thank you so much for joining me on this edition of this day. We appreciate that you're creating time to talk to us on this. And let's get straight into it. We start off by talking about the FOCAC, which you and the President were a part of in China. And the basic question I'm going to ask is why this is significant for Zambia and why it was especially important at this specific time. Um, thank you. Thank you very, very much for giving um, me this opportunity. Um, to engage with um, our citizens uh, around Zambia's foreign policy um, and essentially uh, the work that is being done in order to ensure that the foreign policy delivers uh, for the people of Zambia. Um, maybe before we go straight into the dis discussion around FOCAC, I think it's important to give a context um, to Zambia's current standing in terms of uh, how it relates to other nation states uh, globally. Um, Zambia has taken a position um, since the coming in of the New Dawn government that uh, it will um, engage with the rest of the world on the basis of two pillars that inform uh, the foreign policy. Uh, one, in relation to peace, security and uh, stability, um, insofar as the globe and the sub-region and the continent is concerned. Um, this peace and security and stability is aimed at creating uh, a platform, a, a foundation upon which um, Zambia relates with other nations um, so as to foster development. And uh, equally, uh, we have taken a stance that will base our interaction uh, on economic diplomacy as well. Of, of course, that's not to say that we are ignoring many of the other um, uh, areas of uh, engagement, such as cu cultural exchange uh, and, and the rest of it. But these are our two main pillars. Uh, economic diplomacy uh, is in in intended, uh, again, uh, to be used as a tool of ensuring that our engagement with uh, uh, nation states uh, that uh, are within uh, our global system is one that is aimed at bringing uh, a mutual uh, benefit to ourselves as a country and our friends um, that we cooperate with. And, and again, ultimately for the interest of the people through social economic development. So when you take that context, then you will understand that our engagement uh, with uh, the people of China through the FOCAC um, um, meetings that were held, the FOCAC summit, the summit that was held uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago uh, is one that is anchored on what I've just spoken about. And it was also anchored on the longstanding relationship, uh, relations between Zambia and, Ch and the People's Republic of China, uh, stemming back from the days of President Kaunda, from the days of Chairman Mao, uh, and more recently stemming back from the close relationship between Zambia and China that has been built between President Xi Jinping on the one hand and President Hagai Jirema following his uh, state visit in September of 2023, at which the relationship between Zambia and China was upscaled to one of a comprehensive strategic uh, cooperative partnership. So it's a mouthful, but I, I think uh, it gives the context of why it was necessary uh, for us to, like the other nations um, within the continent who were all uh, represented at uh, this year's FOCAC uh, to engage with our counterparts. I'll be getting into the details of the conference, but before that, I'd also like for us to spend a little bit of time, uh, especially that you talk about our relationship with China, but you also talk about our foreign policy. 
Based on our values as a country, our values and our beliefs, which include democracy, how do you think our relationship with China is reconciled by the criticism that China receives on their system of governance and you know, their lack of belief in the traditional democracy, as I would like to categorize it, and how we find a meeting ground, given the circumstances of the different ideologies that we share between ourselves and Zambia and China? Uh, yes, and, and uh, perhaps, um, um, Jonah, the important thing uh, is, uh, first of all, it's, it's not only about the money that we need for our investment. Uh, it's, it's much, much more than that. It is a friendship that has uh, lasted for 60 uh, years now, uh, six decades, uh, because our diplomatic, diplomatic relations started as long ago uh, as uh, our independence. Uh, and uh, that then entails that we have had years of interaction uh, with the people of China uh, through this diplomatic relation. And during that interaction, uh, I, I reiterate, there has been more than uh, simply the need for money, but a friendship that has stood the test of time, a friendship that has delivered for Zambia from as long ago as 1976 or thereabout when the Tazara rail line was completed and handed over, thereby giving a lifeline to Zambia in terms of access to the sea, something that we did not have. The questions of a human rights record uh, are, are, are rec questions that uh, really speak to the internal um, matters of the, of the country, its sovereignty and the ethos by which it stands. And of course, that's not to say that uh, we do not, would want to relate with a nation that um, has got blatant uh, human rights, uh, a blatant human rights record that's, that shows uh, that they do not follow uh, the, the, the set ethos in, in the United Nations system. Um, I, and one would argue uh, that uh, in, indeed the question is whether there is empirical proof of that um, or of any of our friends, including China. Um, uh, and the question also that would be asked is uh, China is a, is a member of the Security Council, is uh, part of the United Nations system, which has an inbuilt mechanism of checking these matters. Uh, and therefore, uh, for one to ask, um, for us to build an, a mechanism of our own, or for any other nation to build a mechanism of its own of judging another uh, sovereign state um, would leave uh, a much to be desired. Uh, so we operate within the framework of the United Nations system. Uh, we respect and appreciate um, what is uh, put forward within the, nation, uh, the framework of the United Nations system in terms of all of us as nation states and what is expected of us. And certainly uh, where a question arises in relation to any particular nation and how it, 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 um, it deals with, for the lack of a better term, the um, the set principles of human rights as enshrined in various uh, United Nations documents, uh, then we would take the appropriate uh, um, um, position in relation to that. I, I hope uh, I've been very, very clear and I've answered the question. I believe you have, but let's take a look at another angle. And, you know, this is over 50 states being represented in China in an... In an environment or in a deal that is ideally supposed to be between one country and an entire continent. And this is prompting critics of FOCAC to argue along the lines of one country summoning, commanding a whole legion of nations from an entire continent to come and attend a conference on how a country is going to deal with a continent. How does this plan out in respecting the sovereignty of these countries because different African countries have different demands and you know, putting them together as if it's one country and dealing with uh, China kind of presents the impression that Africa is a country. And how do you also reconcile Africa's demand for influence around the world if it can only be recognized when it comes as a group of countries? Uh, I, I put, I'd, I'd uh, struggle with the, with the expression undermining the influence. Um, because these conferences uh, are held in order to maximize uh, the potential uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, cooperation and partnership between uh, the 
nation states, the countries that uh, participate in the conferences. So how that could un uh, uh, amount to undermining influence uh, is, is it leaves uh, uh, again begs a question um, it, it, with with due respect. Uh, but but let's look at this from a perspective of realism, practicality, and ra rather than emotion. Um, what is the essence of these uh, particular conferences? And and we cannot single out FOCA to the, in that particular regard. I'll, I'll speak to a number of them that have been held um, most recently and which Zambia has participated. Um, a, a few months ago, uh, I was uh, in Copenhagen um, for the Nordic uh, Africa Summit, uh, at which the Nordic countries were able to put on the table how uh, they believe the cooperation between themselves as Nordic states, uh, as as a as a regional sub body, as it were, um, should 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 be with ourselves as uh, uh, African countries. And of course, as you rightly pointed out, there are various interests, uh, various um, uh, areas of possible cooperation, which are not tailor made to one particular country and one particular block. And this is why you find that at these events, you have important side meetings uh, between various as parties uh, and stakeholders and representatives of, of countries, nation states, uh, so as to be able to tailor these matters uh, to suit uh, the particular uh, 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 intricacies of the relationship at, at play. Uh, similarly, I attended uh, Korea Africa Summit. Uh, again, we're talking about an, an economy that is uh, really, really growing at a rapid rate. Um, and uh, looking to find a way in which this growth can uh, uh, result in uh, strategic partnerships with, with uh, countries on the African continent. Um, again, further, um, very recently, uh, the Japan uh, held TCAD 9, I believe it is, uh, at which the the uh, developments that have been achieved, the, the advancements that have been achieved between uh, Japan and um, the, the countries on the African continent were discussed uh, and uh, uh, areas uh, agreed where there can be improvement. Uh, so this will give you a clear pattern. By the way, um, TICAD has been held from time immemorial. It is not a new issue. And it is uh, literally an extension of a hand of friendship an extension of uh, how we can best achieve um, uh, equality uh, and uh, partnerships that give value to us who are in the global south, many of whom uh, are considered less developed countries. Uh, now coming to FOCAC, uh, similar uh, sort of approach. And the, the question is, how do we collaborate more effectively? And that should be, I think, the focus of any discussion, uh, rather than looking at semantics as to whom uh, has some on the other and uh, and related issues. Uh, uh, you might want to know, for example, uh, Jonah, that uh, the next uh, uh, FOCAC summit will be held on the African continent. Um, for uh, It's held every three years. So the next two um, uh, summits, if I'm not mistaken, will be held on the African continent. Uh, and uh, so the question of one country summoning the other and the rest of it uh, really um, is neither here nor there in my considered view. Well, you are right. Uh, the FOCAC has, in fact, already been alternating from inception. You know, it's sometimes held in, uh, on the African continent and other times in China. But I think that the bigger issue on this has always been that it is one country dealing with an entire continent. But I, I mean, I think we've talked about that. But I also want to move on. Um, this trip to FOCAC, to China, comes at a time when Zambia is experiencing one of the harshest economic times sponsored or powered by a lack of electricity. And this lack of electricity has meant businesses are struggling and the local economy is struggling. But China, on the other hand, is one of the global examples on uh, sustainable energy solutions, but also just sufficient energy supply within their own country. What conversations have been going on between Zambia and China with regards sorting out our energy crisis as we partner with this global superpower. Thank you, thank you. Um, the energy challenges that we are faced with come off the back of very important for us to recognize and mention, Jonah, that we have uh, an El Nino situation uh, that's ravaging uh, Southern Africa. It's not unique to Zambia. Uh, we have uh, a situation where SADC itself 
um, joined uh, post our uh, national declaration, uh, joined in, in declaring uh, the El Nino situation we have as a disaster across the Sadiq region. Um, Jonah, if you looked uh, at uh, uh, the, the state of our water bodies, it's, it's quite, de it's quite uh, uh, depressing, I must say. Uh, very recently, I saw a, a video where a gentleman was actually crossing um, the Zambezi River or the Zambezi River bed, as it were, because it's completely uh, in that video dry and he's able to walk from Zambia into Zimbabwe. So what we are dealing with is a, a, a disaster of uh, the highest order and something that has not been seen in many, many generations. I think we need to start from there. Uh, and once we start from there, we we'll would then recognize that uh, we will, being a country that is uh, dependent heavily on um, hydroelectric power, we'll clearly have a situation where a challenge arises and we need friends with the appropriate level of capital who can come in and help us address this. This is exactly uh, what we went out to, to seek uh, as part of our participation in uh, the FOCAC summit because we arrived a couple of days earlier so that we could engage with known um, companies that uh, um, uh, participate in the uh, energy sector. Uh, amongst them, uh, uh, we have, uh, even prior to leaving, uh, been engaged with a company known as Power China with a multi-million dollar balance sheet. Um, when we were in, um, in China, we engaged with Power China. We engaged also with another company in, in, uh, in uh, Urumuchi City uh, known as TBEA um, that are, again, uh, renowned worldwide in a capacity um, to gen to, to build equipment uh, that is specific for use in a particular market in the energy sector. Again, a multi-million dollar company. Several other companies we met, perhaps we do not have time for me to go through each of them, uh, but also we met uh, uh, and, and visited the, the, the manufacturing plant of uh, an entity known as Longi, uh, who have been uh, in Zambia for some time as well, have had presence. And, but by the way, all these companies have each had presence in Zambia, uh, delivering, for example, transmission lines or uh, other projects. Now, what we are saying is that we are looking at sh short, medium to long term solutions for the energy sector. We are saying that the renewable energy uh, uh, potential of the country is extremely uh, uh, huge in terms of solar energy and, in, and indeed a mix of different sources of energy. energy. And we're saying to our uh, uh, counterparts with whom we signed several MOUs, by the way, come, we have an emergency situation. <clears throat> bring your expertise, bring your technology, and work with our people here in Zambia in strategic partnerships from a private sector perspective, using your balance sheets that are already robust enough to, to be able to assist in a win-win kind of way. Uh, so that the national um, um, resources, uh, the, the national balance sheet uh, is not used for the purposes of addressing these, part these particular challenges that we have. So we were able to see firsthand um, the ability of some of these our companies to, to produce equipment, um, transforming equipment and other equipment uh, capable of producing uh, in the uh, millions of megawatts, uh, in, in the hundreds of thousands of megawatts, uh, power that would be able to assist us in uh, uh, addressing this energy crisis, both in the short, long and, and medium term, if I may. Uh, and part of the um, resolutions that we're looking at is to talk about uh, enhancing rooftop generation through these MOUs so that every household um, would be able to benefit from this um, at, a, at, a, at a price that is uh, more or less affordable. But also importantly, we prior to us undertaking this trip, you'll be aware that legislative changes were made, it, were made big pardon, which allowed for uh, the small players, you and I, to be able to participate in the energy sector through the net metering initiative and open access, which were not there before. What does this say? What does this do? It allows you, as a as an individual or in a group of others, uh, to generate your own electricity in a, in even a mini grid uh, formation, uh, and and for that electricity, once your own consumption has been satisfied, to be able to be supplied into the grid uh, up to five megawatts so that others can tap off and use that. So even if uh, I may not have the capacity as an individual to put solar on my rooftop, I can still stand to benefit from this initiative 
uh, from the innovation of others. And I think that is an important aspect for the short term. In the medium to long term, um, we have uh, a, a, an initiative but that is being looked at. Uh, as you may know, or as the viewers may know, in the northern part of Zambia, we had not so bad an El, an El Nino situation as in the southern central part. So we have sufficient water in Wakula and the Wapula River system and, uh, and of course the lakes that drain it uh, um, to be able to channel water. And this is something that is being actively looked at uh, by Power China uh, through the construction of canals to bring water from the north into the Kafua River Basin. And then that would be able to uh, drive the hydro generation facilities that we have on that river, the Kafua uh, Lower and Upper Gorge. Uh, so this is, this is just an outlook of some of the areas of, of uh, interest that we discussed. While we're still on this, we know that uh, China has also received some global criticism on its uh, carbon neutrality because of its use of thermal energy. But there's also challenges that China is facing with its capacity at the moment, especially when it comes to solar energy. What are some of the lessons that we are drawing as Zambia from how this country that we're partnering with is dealing with its energy situation, both the positives and the negatives? Um, thank you. Maybe just to correct the impression, uh, Jonah, the, it is not entirely correct to say that uh, the generation facilities in China are um, pre predominantly coal, coal-based. Um, I am aware that, uh, in fact, uh, China has itself put a cap on uh, any new generation facilities coming up that are coal based. A lot of innovation has gone into the use of hydro um, in China. And of course, uh, a lot of innovation has gone into renewable energy sources. So we have a, a significant mix uh, in terms of the energy generating capacity that is used in China. And this is the mix that we want to benefit from in terms of the newest levels of technology, in terms of ensuring that uh, we leave as much of a, a green um, a footprint rather than a carbon rich footprint as we undertake this activity. So without, of course, uh, eliminating any particular source, provided that it is uh, green, uh, provided that it provide, uh, it gives a clean um, outcome uh, in the generation, we are looking also at a, a mix of, um, of uh, technologies to achieve the best outcome for the people of Zambia. Let's talk about the MOU that uh, Zesco signed with the, uh, some of the energy suppliers in China. Because one of the things that comes out a lot about these MOUs signed by government is that people don't exactly know what is in these MOUs. So when it comes to Zesco specifically and some of the MOUs that they've signed, what is in there? Um, yes, well, there, there were a total of 15 MOUs that were signed um, uh, on, on the sidelines of FOCAC. Uh, and each of these, uh, in a nutshell, relates to areas of uh, a partnership, of areas of development. I already alluded, for example, to uh, TBEA, uh, to Power China, uh, that uh, one of the MOUs, uh, for example, that was signed with Power China. Uh, was in relation to the North-South Water Project, if I may call it that, uh, where we want um, uh, to, to harness uh, the uh, abundant water in the northern region of the country and bring it into the Kafua River Basin so that uh, it is able to assist not only in irrigation uh, and, and use by our, our people in, in, uh, within the corridor that it will, it, will, it will pass through, but also to uh, provide much needed water for uh, generation. Um, within the Kafua River system. We already have generating uh, uh, capacity there. I also already alluded to the rooftop uh, 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 electricity innovation, uh, where the one of the MOUs that are signed with SESCO are to allow for our city. rooftop solar uh, is one of the key uh, components uh, and, and they're able to generate um, enough uh, uh, electricity for their use and even net off, uh, I mean, sell through netting off uh, like we have just done. Uh, so these are some of the other areas. Um, in addition, there is a, a drive 
to have value addition in the country. And so uh, some of the MOUs speak to these entities coming and establishing uh, their uh, manufacturing plants uh, so that they're able to, as I talked about earlier, uh, exploit the markets that Zambia presents through it being land linked. And also at the same time provide uh, what jobs for our people in Zambia provide uh, uh, affordable uh, solar panels uh, and other uh, renewable energy equipment uh, for use in Zambia and beyond. Uh, so it's a wide range of uh, uh, um, activity to be undertaken in the energy sector and beyond uh, that is contained in those MOUs, short term, medium term and long term. I, I think I've demonstrated what I'm talking about. And in addition, there is interest in the use of our resources in a value adding way, creation of uh, uh, plants uh, that would um, feed into the energy sector. For example, uh, the windings for, for, for transformers that are so essential in the energy sector can be made here. Windings being uh, copper, copper wire that is put in those transformers to allow them to, to, to operate uh, uh, in the manner that they do. I, I hope I've simplified it as, as best as I can. And this is all part of a visionary approach to ensuring that we build resilience so that we are able to withstand shocks such as the one that we are currently facing going forward in the near, uh, short, in the near medium and, lo and long term. So, so I can only summarize in that regard. All right. Now, Minister, let's talk about the $50 billion that China has pledged as investment on the African continent. Uh, funding that they have prepared for the African continent and over one million jobs uh, from, uh, for the African continent. Where is Zambia seeing itself in this $50 billion that is available and how best are we looking at making use of this funding? Uh, yes, thank you very much, um, uh, Jonah, for that question. I, I, I think it's a, it's a pool that's available uh, for use by uh, countries that may need to use uh, that particular uh, fund that has been set up within the context of uh, the uh, African uh, uh, set up uh, the African. Zambia, we have a number of areas where we'd want um, uh, to participate uh, in in that fund that has been set aside, the pool that has been set aside, uh, including, of course, um, in capacity building. So. Uh, that has put China where it is uh, into our country and to train our citizens to be uh, productive uh, in a, a way that is uh, um, uh, value adding. I'll, I'll continue to use that expression uh, during our discussion. So again, uh, the, the, is, the sky's the limit. The potential is there for this uh, partnership to grow into uh, measurable outcomes and results, uh, and also for our people uh, to draw a direct benefit from there. So that is the general thought process. But I think more importantly, Jonah, uh, we must talk about uh, the, um, the partnership actions, the 10 partnership actions that um, China has put forward uh, in um, fomenting this new relationship between ourselves uh, as a continent and and uh, and, and uh, the people of China, as it were, and and one of the key areas is in the, uh, the, the pronouncement that um, China would offer will offer going forward a hundred percent non-tariff uh, uh, trade opportunities for the less developed countries. So uh, the less developed countries will be paying zero. Uh, tariffs uh, for their export uh, export of goods into China. I think that is an area of potential growth in a way uh, that is um, uh, value adding uh, and and that shows the the, the special place in which China uh, is placing uh, countries of the African continent um, amongst um, other areas of uh, uh, partnership. Uh, the, the other partnership actions uh, I've talked about trade, for example. Um, other areas include um, uh, the, the industrial uh, chain um, uh, in terms of growth and cooperation, um, other, including also uh, participation in health, the establishment of uh, hospitals uh, and uh, 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 joint medical centers in, in the form of an alliance, the investment in uh, pharmaceutical production, um, investment in the agriculture and uh, uh, 
livestock sectors. Um, there, there are so many areas of potential partnership that this uh, new approach that is being taken um, uh, offer uh, in terms of benefits for us and the people of Zambia and of course the people of China who would be participating in this. And I think we need to look at this relationship broadly from that perspective uh, so as to draw uh, mutual benefit uh, from it. Especially that you talk about pharmaceuticals. That's one of the areas where Zambia and a lot of other African countries are struggling because they are unable to manufacture their own medication and are reliant on importation. But unfortunately, a lot of African countries don't have enough disposable income to import these medicines from uh, other countries. Hence, having an insufficient supply of medicines on the market. How are we looking at specifically partnering with China to drive change in Zambia's pharmaceutical industry to have an effective pharmaceutical industry that will meet demand of local medicines in hospitals and public institutions especially? Yes, uh, Jonah, uh, these are immediate actions. Uh, as we speak now, the matrix has been developed and we're looking at implementation strategies. Uh, you will have seen, for example, very recently, uh, Southern Tropics. And by the way, this is another direction which we as Zambia put forward to uh, our counterparts in China, um, that President Hijlema put forward to his counterpart, President Xi Jinping, uh, on, uh, during the bilateral discussions and uh, at the opening uh, um, session uh, during his address, and that there must be a, a closer relationship between um, uh, sub-regions in the, in the two countries. So you'll have seen recently that the, the province of Fujian uh, is working closely with the southern province so that you can see the direct benefit trickling there. And, uh, and now uh, with uh, Honorable Minister Southern Province, Credo Nanjua, who's in China and have just returned as the case may be, uh, has come back with again another practical solution in terms of value adding um, through a building of a uh, in an industry to, for uh, batteries to be done here in Zambia. So, so these, when we talk about them, we're not talking about tomorrow or yesterday, we're talking about now and the immediate actions that will be taken, which will result in measurable outcomes. Uh, we're doing things in a way that is uh, hands-on rather than the, the perhaps uh, traditional way that we have done things in the past where it's a talking shop uh, rather than an, an, a, an exercise that will result in measurable outcomes. So as we talk now, we have teams that are coming in uh, from China, from the various uh, uh, institutions uh, that we, we engaged with, uh, both uh, prior to FOCAC since uh, 2020, the, the 2023 visit and, and now uh, post the FOCAC, we merged these two checklists into actionable items which are being uh, worked on as we speak. For example, TBA, already, beg pardon, uh, Power China already sent a team to do a visibility study, a feasibility study for the uh, North-South Water Project. And they, they did their, their, their work. They went on the ground. They're doing the modeling and designing and looking at how, how a most cost-effective, uh, uh, but, um, uh, effect, but not most cost-effective, but also practical system can, can be put in place to see this uh, particular uh, uh, project come to fruition. We have uh, experts that are looking at uh, the uh, Tazara uh, on a day-by-day -day basis, hence the signing of the MOU, to see how this can be made into a, a deliverable outcome. Uh, so we can't be talking about uh, matters as though they are not happening as we speak. They are happening in all the sectors. And uh, that speaks volumes to how we, under the New Dawn government, through the leadership of our president, Hijlema, want to do things. Finally, Minister, let me take you the political route. And at the start of your administration as the United Party for National Development, you received a lot of criticism in how you dealt with China. There were suggestions that the UPND government was much more pro-West and anti-East. And because of this, you were not willing to deal with China. The president has since traveled to China twice in the last year. And 
I would like to find out if you believe as the UPND administration that this puts to rest this belief that you are not in good books with China. Uh, yes, certainly, uh, Jonah, the, the misconception, um, again, uh, through the uh, use of uh, political platforms, uh, that was there at the outset, was that the Zambia, in one way or the other, may have strained relations with uh, any of its um, uh, friends, uh, in particular, in this case, we're talking about uh, the People's Republic of China, and that has never been the case. Uh, it's, it's very clear uh, from these outcomes, from the engagements, that Zambia is making a statement that we are open to business. We uh, believe in uh, friendly relations. We believe in uh, peace, uh, st stability, uh, <laughs> peace, security, and stability as our ethos. And we are saying uh, we will be friends with uh, those of our like-minded friend uh, uh, countries, uh, whether they are found in the global south or elsewhere. Uh, and this we have demonstrated through the continued relations with uh, these state countries from across the globe. Uh, and that is uh, the essence of it. Our fr friendship with China has lasted for many, many uh, decades, as I indicated at the beginning of this interview, from the time of President Kaunda and uh, Chairman Mao. Uh, and therefore, for one to say that at any point it became s so strained that there could be uh, an argument that we did not want to work with uh, China, uh, they have been proved wrong. Uh, we have been vindicated as the New Dawn government that we look at these matters from a more uh, clear perspective, from the perspective of what our foreign policy is, which is, as I stated uh, earlier, based on those two principles, nothing more and nothing less. And, and so I, I think we as a people of Zambia should, speaking as a politician now, give credit where credit is due, upload the work uh, that his, uh, his Excellency President Hijelema has put in place, upload the work that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has put in place and other ministries. When I speak of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I have in mind also my counterpart, my predecessor, who laid the groundwork in the last three years and the baton has been handed over and the work continues from an implementation perspective and people are able to see what we are doing. It can be seen that a lot of effort is being put into uh, improving the welfare of the people of Zambia through our international engagements with China and the world beyond. Minister Mulambo Haimbe, thank you for talking to us on this edition of this day. Thank you. Um, I, I'm grateful for having been given this opportunity. Thank you.